So compound interest is this idea that if you put money into an account, you are rewarded with interest the longer that account is in there. When the second year comes around or whatever the terms are, you now can earn interest on your money plus the interest. So now your interest is earning interest. And this is money that you never had to put in. And so the idea is that you put a dollar in and then miraculously 20 years later, you now have $10, even though we only used one of your dollars. And I think a good mental model for interest is you're either paying it or you're earning it. Yeah. And so with credit cards or any debt that you take on, that same math is working against you as opposed to investments where if you're putting this money in and your interest is earning interest, um, it's working for you. I think the reverse is let's say you pay $10 for a t-shirt. When that credit card is due in 30 days, if you don't pay that full $10 at the 20 to 30% that credit cards are charging you, that same t-shirt now costs you $13. And if you don't pay it that month, that same t-shirt now costs you $16. And so if you aren't paying your credit cards, you're basically paying $150 for a $10 t-shirt which is why it's important to pay that off every month. So it's, it's one of those forces that, you know, if you're paying it, every percent is expensive. That's yep. the way you need to think of it. Whether it's 1% or 10%, it's all expensive. If you wouldn't leave a $500 tip at a McDonald's, then you shouldn't be comfortable paying $500 in fees every year on your credit card because money is money. And that's kind of what we, we try to teach people to look at it that way, where it's like, if you would be upset if you lost $100, then you should definitely be upset when you're paying $100 in interest every month. You're just throwing it away. That and then they tout the big 1% that they're offering you for, you know, 20,000 in their savings account. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah, I'll give you 1.5 and you're a platinum, you know, whatever that, you know, they all have their own different buckets and you got to give them $50,000 to earn 2% on something. It's, 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 a, it's an interesting game that they play. And even if it's not interest, the, the service fees or the, you know, they have all kinds of fancy mm -hmm. names for fees. But we think of fees as the other F word. Like it is, it should be that offensive to you to try and manage your fees and not just in your, you know, consumer accounts, but also in your 401ks and yep. in your, in your investment vehicles. Like if you have these giant fees, you're basically agreeing to split your hard earned money with someone you don't know, with, yep. with CEOs that get eight figure bonuses on a down year when the economy is dying, like <laughs> you're funding that, which you know, if that's okay with you, then right on. But I think a lot of people wouldn't feel good about that in general. If they understood it, yeah. If they understood it, which goes back to your point. They've, they've complicated it so much. They've created a language around it. And there are all these tools out there today where you can change that language into a story or into a metaphor to help it be more approachable. But there aren't a lot of people doing that outside of the FIRE community. There aren't people who are actively trying to make this information more accessible and give you workarounds and give you new tools to accomplish the same thing.